on the Data Quality Online Academy. So, some questions about this app. Have you seen it? Have you used it? Do all the analytic users have access to this app in your country? Are you sure? Go and check. So some of the learning objectives, we will look at what is the most common use of the data quality app, the value of validation rules, how to translate validation rules into actual use, and some issues associated with the data quality app. There will be no DHIS online training of how to move your cursor here and what to select there. You can use the manual. So the DQ app contains the following. It allows you to do a validation rule analysis, a standard deviation analysis, a min-max outlier analysis, and a follow-up analysis. So let's talk about validation rules to start. Who's responsible? If I talk about validation rules, I sort of get everybody looking away from me. And the feeling is, well, you know, they're not important, so it doesn't matter. Uh, nobody runs them anyway. And if they do, and you find something, nobody does anything. You can't change anything. So why bother to do this? If we start with validations, is we start asking the questions about who's responsible for thinking about them and then defining them. Is the person or the people or the group, is it the HMIS DHIS2 configuration expert? Is it a program manager? Is it a district information officer? Who has to do the thinking and the defining and the configuration? Or is that done by one person who takes the responsibility? Then we ask, well, who's responsible for running these rules? The data entry clerk, the program manager, facility or district information officer or higher law, higher level, who's responsible for running them. If we want to understand the logic of validation rules, we need a method, it is a method to assess the quality of data entered in DHIS2. And these rules are based on a set of predefined rules set for the data. Unfortunately, the validation rules do not allow you to fully figure out whether or not the values reported are completely accurate. It is only based on what is in DHIS2. And if a value is 25, you don't know was it 25 clients they saw and they transferred from the client record onto the tally sheet, onto the input form, and they captured 25. You are just given the 25. So how do we define a validation rule? We use the term an expression. An expression is the, a relationship between a number of data elements that talk to each other. This validation rule expression has a left side, a right side, and in the middle we have an operator. And so some of the common operator use is less than or equal to, equal to or greater than and equal to. So some of the operators that we see most commonly. Validation rules are created on base what you know is true. Malaria RDT tested cannot be more than malaria RDT positive. Because in order to be RDT positive, you had to be tested. Another example is live birth weighing less than 2.5 kilogram cannot be more than live births. Validation rules are created based on what you know is true. For instructions on how to set up a validation rule, read the manual. They're actually very good and we don't read them often enough. So some simple guides to validation rules. Validation rules are assigned to groups. 
validation rules must be easy to use and understand. We must try and make them simple. Signs like less than, equal to, or greater than. Are you sure everybody understands them? And the minute they see them, they automatically know what they mean. So make sure that everybody understands them. When you set up a validation rule, there's an importance field, which is low, medium, or high. What guides you to what to select for that? Or do you just select the default? Then the other simple guide for validation rules, be consistent in how you set them up. Always have the smaller number first. We want to implement that as standard best practice. So it's the less than or equal to. The smaller number is on the left hand side. Validation rules should be run after data entry before the complete button is ticked and any errors identified or triggered corrected. Validation rules should be run after most or all the monthly data has been captured. So that would be the second or the third or the fourth week of the month. So who's responsible for running these validation rules? We've asked that question before. Who should be doing this? And do you have a standard operating procedure to guide the process of running these rules and then taking action? Or is it left to chance? Maybe something good will happen. So how to run a validation rules? You select an org unit, you select a time period, you select your group and you click validate. Depending on the size of your database and the number of rules to be run, be careful in what you select. Try and avoid crashing the system. Once you have run the validation rules, you get a report which can be downloaded into different formats. Um, Excel is the easiest. So this is the output once you have run the report. So on the left, you start off with the name of the facility, the time period, the importance. Remember, we discussed who decides low, medium or high. Then the validation rule, and in this output, it's blank. Then what is the left value? What was the operator and the value on the right side? And then there is a detail icon. And if you double click on the detail icon, you will get the rule explained to you. So this rule says that child, children five to nine years old with acute respiratory illness should be greater than or equal to child five to nine years with pneumonia. So the left hand side, child with symptoms of acute respiratory illness five to nine years, there were no children seen. And the right hand said, of the no children seen, 11 were diagnosed with pneumonia. When you see something like this where there is a missing value and then a value, you need to determine should the 11 have been the acute respiratory and the pneumonia. So you actually need to go and find out why is there a missing value. And what is the correct response to how do you fix this validation rule? And there are many ways of going about sorting this out. If you get a list which you download into Excel, this is what the report will look like. Facility, the time period, the rule, the left side, the value, the operator, the value on the right side and the right side description. And if you've downloaded it into Excel, you can sort it to according to organization units and you can give to supervisors and program managers for action. So this is how you sort out your validation rules. Then the other services available in the data quality app, the standard deviation analysis. Now we mainly use the WHO DQ tool for extreme outliers and missing data. The min-max outlier analysis, this you can only use if you have set min-max values. 
and you need to set them for first and the next presentation will go through that process. And the last aspect in the data quality app is the follow-up analysis. It's used to mark data that is correct but does not fit the pattern or triggers a validation rule and we will have a slide about that. This is marked for follow-up. When you double click a data a value you will get a data information window and top left hand corner you have a space for a comment and if you click on the star you can save it you highlight the star and you save. and this comment in the star is useful to explain when a validation rule has been triggered or explains why the data doesn't look as you want it to look and then you can run the report on the follow-up stars. So some discussions. What are the barriers to running validation rules? Have you looked at the data and set the most possible validation rules? Have you done everything that could be done? Do validation rules pick up all the data mistakes? We've spoken about that earlier. When obvious data entry errors are identified, why are they not corrected? Who is responsible for chasing up the data entry errors? What happens when these errors are not corrected? What is the result? So here are some exercises associated. So Confirm access to the data quality app in the country DHIS2 instances. Obtain a list of all validation rules and the groups that they fit into. You may have to ask the IT people to help you. Review all your validation rules. Review them for consistency in terms of the smaller value first. We've spoken about that. Then I want you to run at, at least two validation rule groups for the last six months. Write a short report on the rules that are violated. As part of your short report, consider an action plan. Do some rules need to be rewritten to make them easier to understand? That could be part of your action plan. Are some rules being triggered consistently? And is that a problem of data quality or is that a problem with the rule? And then I want you to think of one rule that you can add to the current list. Thank you.